Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And Alex, do you want to react to things today? Gasp. (gasps) It was... Professor Maple in the <laughs> library the whole time. Yep. <laughs> the I clue reference. He poisoned people with maple syrup. Don't know exactly how Legit. that worked. Mm. So we're talking about reactions today. Tell me, what do we mean by reactions, Nathan? Okay, so uh, if people are familiar with role-playing games, I don't know, are you familiar with role-playing games? Yeah, I'm fairly... Oh, okay. I, Familiar. I didn't know that about you, but you know, we learn something new on every episode. Anyway, um, there is a mechanic that you see in, in Dungeons and & Dragons and many others um, called reactions. Uh, so these are essentially actions that your player character is able to take, or I suppose NPCs, at that matter, are able to take when it is not necessarily their turn. Uh, so, uh, you know, if I wanted to, well, let's talk a little bit about what a reaction might actually be. Um, it might be something like, uh, if I wanted to block or parry an attack, or if I wanted to roll an opposing roll when somebody does something. Um, for instance, uh, a monk. This is probably the best... <laughs> I, I always refer back to monks because it's the thing I actually know about. But there is the deflect missile ability. Uh, right. So somebody fires an arrow. Uh, if I want to, I can use my reaction to say I want to try to deflect that. I roll for that to see if I mitigate the damage. If I mitigate the entire damage, I can actually also roll to see if I can just chuck it back at them and hit them with their own arrow. <laughs> that's, that's a thing I can do. Uh, yeah, because throwing arrows is super efficient. It just, it sounds super great, though. Like somebody, well, well. see, in my mindset, it's somebody shoots an arrow at you, you you grab the arrow, swirl around while the arrow is still, has momentum behind it, and chuck it back at them after you've moved around, and so... Your, your body would never slow down the arrow from its momentum at way faster than you can throw its speeds. But that's not the point. Not in a fantasy <laughs> game. I mean, I mean, you do have to take everything inside of a, a game with a bit of a grain of salt. Uh, also, yes. there are no actual dragons. So, <laughs> sorry. That we know of. Allegedly. Komodo dragons. Allegedly. They do not breathe fire. You don't know that? And I don't want to find out. Um, so reactions are also sort of like instants. Or spell interrupts or the like from, like, Magic the Gathering. Yes, these would also be actions. Mm-hmm. Somebody takes an action and you take an action, when it's not technically on your turn generally, uh, to react and do something about what they just did. But I had some uh, things that I wanted to try and clarify or get some, some more opinions on when it comes to what actually would constitute a reaction. Because one of the things that... Uh, initially comes to mind is something called held actions. You're probably familiar with that too. Yeah, I've I've been around the block a few times. You, I'm fairly <laughs> familiar. It's been a while since I've used one. Sure. Uh, held action is generally uh, conditional, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. So it's I would like to hold my action until this happens. Right. Um, but that's not necessarily the same as a reaction, since a reaction takes place. Regardless if you hold an action, so you can still take your turn Mm -hmm. and have a reaction. Okay. But if you hold your action, you're forgoing your turn in order to react to a specific circumstance. If I'm explaining it correctly. If not, someone in the comments let me know. Yeah, they probably will. Uh, But as far as I'm aware, yes, if you wanted to actually hold your action, you you could say that under certain conditions, I will take a certain action. But now the thing that I was always confused by, at least something I was confused by, is that I, I feel like sometimes people actually take that as an, a reaction. Like, that, that your held action then ends up being counted as a reaction because it is not being taken on your turn. It is being taken on somebody else's turn. So if I say that, like, I'm going to wait to hit this thing until somebody comes inside range of where I'm at, 
uh, and then I do that, th- I think that there are some people that would say, well, maybe you don't actually get a reaction as well if I needed to take that for that whole missile not slowing down while I twist around and chuck it back at the other guy for for that action. So do you feel like held actions should actually uh, count separately from what a reaction would be? Oh, yeah. I, th- I think they're totally two different things. In your example, like, if you're waiting for someone to get in range of your bow, sure. for instance, well, who's to say the character knows that distance? Like, sure. Exactly. Like, it's judged based on, like, your sight. Mm-hmm. So, in character, you wouldn't know when that person gets in range of your bow, like, when they're 130 feet away. You can make a perception check or whatever and be like, yeah, I think they're in, in range. Like, your DM could be like, make a perception check. Like, I would do it that way personally, but I don't think it's a reaction then because you're waiting for something to happen rather than on the fly, someone swings a sword at you and you react by putting up your shield. Eh. And then put up a shield. It, yeah. Okay. I think reactions are more uh, versus unexpected things sure. than waiting for specific things. I always kind of imagined that it, it just didn't seem fair to me that if I'm not going to be using my action right now, that I then don't really get the other opportunities down the road <laughs> by having a limited number of things that I can do. Like, I've already declared what I want to do, and so if I've already declared what I want to do, it also makes it really hard for me to, to determine what I can do uh, as, as like a reaction move. Um, and uh, usually these are things that I feel are more defensive in nature if we're talking about reactions uh, because you are responding to what your opponent is doing in the field. Do you feel like that's the case or could it be also used in an offensive sense? I mean... I feel it is generally more defensive, but I don't see a reason it couldn't also be offensive uh, in certain situations as per your um, deflect missile. Yeah. It's a defensive action that can become offensive if you throw the arrow back at them. Correct. It certainly can. Um, One of the other things that Monk can do that's usually used as a reaction (laughs) is uh, slow fall. Uh, so, like, mitigating your actual fall damage. Uh, and that is obviously directly defensive. There's really no offensive ability to that. <laughs> Unless you're landing on someone. Maybe. Uh, maybe. But if that's the case, you probably don't want to do slow fall, because I think that mitigates the damage that you do to the person you fall on. I don't know. I was a very <laughs> big turtle. I figured that anything I land on is going to pretty much be dead. So. <laughs> yeah, same as me as a bear. Um, yep. Plus, so, soul fall is also situational as well because you need to be next to something you can touch. Right. You can't just like be falling midair with nothing around you for miles and just go slow fall. That doesn't work. I mean, you could. The air has weight. No. Air. Air. Nathan. Air has friction. Just do that. Yeah. Just spread your body out. That's different. That's you can still hit terminal velocity. Yeah, not. Not. Not as a monk. Monks, monks are special. Monks, <laughs> monks are always special. <laughs> they figured out ways to get around these things. Um, so the the general sense of whether you have reactions or not is how you actually manage them in a system. I feel like that's kind of the main issue that we're going to have to discuss because reactions, since they are a little bit different than what people typically do on their turn, um, trying to manage what constitutes a reaction seems like the hardest part of this like could i just we gave a couple examples just a second ago about reactions that are in the listed rules as written but what happens if somebody comes along and says that oh i'd like to do a reaction that has no place in the book what am i supposed to do then uh somebody runs up to me and says, I fart in your general direction. and As a reaction, I punch them in the throat. You punch them in the throat. That would be my normal thing. Or you slap them with gloved hand. You know, you just... Bump. See, see, in that case, I think, like, 
especially an example I was thinking of is social reactions. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure there's a specific rule set for those. I'm not sure that if they exist, but I don't see why they shouldn't. Because there is the possibility that your regular action that you take, you might just actually say something or try to persuade someone as a general action. It's not always used, but you could technically do it. I would also like to see on the flip side, DMs requiring like reactionary roles. So somebody does something unexpected that your character shouldn't expect. You know, it's unexpected. They say something, do something, and they want a on-the-fly reaction from someone. Mm -hmm. I would totally see that as doable. Right. Right. Like, let's, let's say the big bad guy suddenly reveals he's your dad. Did he just cut off my hand? <laughs> he might have cut <laughs> <Okay>. off your <laughs> hand. <laughs> Yeah, Luke's reaction was denial. Yes. And, like, not, I don't know if it was fear, but it was, like, definitely denial. And, like, uh, whoa. It was, like, what? That's impossible. What? Ah! Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, a reaction like that, I would totally enjoy seeing, like, a DM calling for a reactionary. Like, don't give your players time to think about what they want to do. Mm. They have to react right then and there. Right. I think that would be an excellent use of non-standard reactions. That's true. That's true. Because typically when they uh, implement reactions, there's usually one reaction that you're able to take. They don't They don't usually stack them. <laughs> um, yeah. You usually only have the one reaction. So it makes me start thinking about, like, as a tactical part of this, if it would behoove your enemy character or even your player character to almost force a reaction from the opponent so that they're not able to actually utilize a reaction in the field. Like like a forced reaction, I don't know if they really use that all that much. I have to force a reaction from the character so that they use it. That seems like the case you were talking about, where yeah. your your enemy does something, and therefore you have to do something. You now are forced to use your reaction in the field. Right. And I think socially, definitely, it would be way harder for them to force that reaction. Mm. Um, unless it was like, the guy says, on guard. It's like, and becomes lunging at you. Mm -hmm. But that's less social. Right. Or if you give like, you have five seconds to comply. Sure. And if you don't comply, we're going to shoot the place up kind of deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it's it's if your DM then starts counting five, four, three. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> you actually do have to react to that immediately in real life. Um, now, here's the thought I was just coming up with in my birdie brain uh, was the idea that you could... This is, again, it depends on your system. Everybody can take a shot now. It depends on your system. <laughs> so, so, right, the drinking game. Yeah, that's we should have We should have pitched that to uh, Jason. Oh, he, he should have found out about Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. Oh, wait, he doesn't do drinking games, so anyways. Yes, that's right. Technically, no. Allegedly. Doesn't do shot drinking games. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, anyway, take a drink. So, let's say that you could use reactions not as something that's actually player-based. Like, the, the reactions are not determined by the player. They're essentially determined by the actions of the enemy. But you are able to take a reaction that is essentially a mental reaction when your enemy does something, uh, especially something that would actually, you know, trigger something for you. And then if you are able to succeed, we could do an actual opposing role, if you are able to succeed, then on a success, maybe you can actually take some kind of action in response. Now that you have beaten essentially your mental, uh, your 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 mental role, your wisdom save, whatever it happens to be, constitution save. Um, so that's forcing a reaction, and then you get to respond. Maybe you get to say, okay, this is the kind of opposing role that I want to do, and it makes sense because of this. And then if you succeed in that, maybe you do get to actually take an offensive action or a defensive action in response because you succeeded at that. Right. There's a, there's a possibility, but it does take it kind of out of the hands of the player themselves. 
Right. On the flip side to that, though, I want mm. to advocate for the overuse of reactions. Mm. Which was something that happened in, I think, the Fantasy Fight 40k RPGs. Mm-hmm. Where it was, for every attack that someone made, there could also be a dodge or a parry or a, you know, some sort of opposing role to it. So it made it feel like it was more dynamic combat, kind of. Like, yeah, it's more flowy. It's like, all right, they attack. All right, I parry. All right, I dodge. And they're now opposed roles, you know, Mm because this person got this, but then you got that. And which one wins, you know? Right, right. So it's uh, it's, in that case, it was, they succeed in an attack. Are you going to parry or dodge it? And it's, all right, I'll parry or I'll dodge. And if you succeed, then you've parried or dodge. But the issue with that, with opposing roles specifically in a combat sense, is it just adds a lot of extra time and not necessarily good tension. Right. Which because it it turn it makes the combat take longer, and then let's say someone dodges every attack you make, it's then you get frustrated. So now what do I do? I'm frustrated. Exactly. Yeah. You pull out your pistol and you shoot at them point blank, and they get a dodge roll. Oh, okay. As, in the in the rules, but as written, I believe you could like try to dodge bullets. I'm like, eh. I mean, I know you're playing Space Marines, mm-hmm. who have faster than human reflexes, but I don't think they have that fast reflexes. I'm dodging this laser. You're what now? Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be tricky. I don't I don't think so, Deadpool. Right, right, right. In many ways though, what you're kind of talking about is in video games, it would be referred to as like taunt for for a taunting action. Like your 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 enemy is essentially taunting you. Uh, into goading you into doing a reaction that may be impulsive uh, because it benefits them. Um, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, so now now they, they kind of go, you want a piece of this? And now I have to do some kind of a reaction, but maybe I'm rolling at disadvantage because they were really good at taunting me. Uh, maybe I can't fire a laser pistol very well. I fire it off onto the side. Uh, maybe into their friend and now now they got to cope with that but it's kind of their fault because they taunted me in the first place this is what happens in combat folks yeah i've always been really i understand the taunt mechanic in video games Mm. but like in a tabletop sense yeah or even in a video game sense like why is it not something that's used versus the player character as often? Right. And to understand the reason that it's not is because it takes away some of that agency, the sense of free will. Yes. Like, oh, you're forcing me to attack you now, Mm -hmm. and I don't want to attack you. Right. It's like, I don't want to do that. The game shouldn't make me do it. But it's like, but you're also doing that to other people. So, like, in a and d sense or role-playing sense, why not have the enemy be able to say, taunt you? Mm-hmm. and use that ability or spell even mm-hmm. and then it's like an opposed role for you do you take the bait or not right do you uh so you'd say in D D, you'd roll a wisdom save mm-hmm. and be like am i able to resist this taunt yeah and then you could take into account like how your character for instance uh what their personality is like would they refuse this taunt Right. I kind of did this with uh, Hephaestus when he died. <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't that he was taunted. It was that he was up on a balcony watching the slaughter of people in the theater by this demon. And he looked at it, and it wasn't that he wanted to save the people. It wasn't anything to do with that. It wasn't a sense of pride or like honor or anything for him. It was... You recognize this creature as an ancient enemy on your home island. Mm. You've grown up with stories, legends about this creature mm. and just how terrible it is. Yeah. And so it was more like a this thing is like an ancestral enemy of mine. It's probably going to kill me, but my sense of self cannot live with me if I don't try my best destroy this creature and so from that sense it wasn't even my character was being taunted it was like using the role-playing mechanics as 
yeah, we've uh, at that point, David's like, what's this creature? Why? Why do you know what it is? Kind of deal. And it was like, all right, the role playing thing is we came up with was that it's an ancient creature from his island's past that he knows and it's a hated creature and whatnot. And it was just like, all right. And he's like, so what do you want to do? I'm like, well, <laughs> since it's a creature from my ancient history and that I know that my anyone that in my island would see and hate and loathe beyond anything else, it's like, I'm going to go straight up and try to kill it. It's like, I can tell out of character this thing's probably going to murder me. My character in-game knew this thing was definitely more powerful than it. Yeah. Like, this is a big old demon. Right. right. And he's like, this thing looks deadly, but he's like, I just have to. Right. Right. And and so, like, when you create those hooks like that, it's not necessarily that it's a reaction to it. As per, all right, make a reaction, you just on the fly. It's a, your character needs to react to the situation that they didn't expect themselves to be in. Sure. Sure. And so my character's reaction was, well, I'm going to attack it. <laughs> right. I'm going to jump on its back and stab it with a sword made of lightning. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's um, that's a that's a party starter right there. Yeah, but, it didn't do a damn thing, but no, you know. No. But now for now what I'm trying to figure out though is would you consider that a reaction that was um triggered against you or was that a decision that you personally were making? It was a decision I personally was making cuz we had to figure out where like in the situation like I was not in combat yet. Right. So it was a it was a conscious decision on my end. Got it. Yeah. Um but it was still what's your reaction to this situation? Right. And that's still a role playing decision, but I could have walked away from it, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But like in the moment, what's your character going to do in that situation? Right. What would their reaction be to seeing this go on? Right. If you see a demon killing people by the dozens, like, mm-hmm. what are you going to do? Are you just going to walk away and be like, yeah, there was a demon murdering people over there, I guess, like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's one of those things, like, the Shadowfell dragon just came down, and, um, well, everybody, what do you want to do about that? Well, technically, it's probably a bad idea to take it on, but what, what else are you going to do? Um, so now... You know, because technically one of the things you could always do in a role-playing game that they they rarely do, but it, you can always run away. You can. You A lot of people don't, and that's no. why a lot of parties uh, die. <laughs> TPK. Yeah, that's why they end up going... That's why several of my players have died. Yeah, that's why a lot of people end up dying. Um, and, uh, you know, hey, when I, when we had our party for, for Circlestone... Um, yeah, we, we, we didn't really run away from battles very much, but I think it was mostly because we got overconfident very early on, like, you know, Ankeg Queen with all of her minions, and uh, then we we get rid of them pretty easy. Uh, oh, okay, well now there's a skeleton naga, and it just rises up out of the floor. Are you going to run away? No, we probably got this. And then we, <laughs> then we, that, then, you know, the halfling barbarian smashes it over the head for like an ungodly amount of damage. And we're like, all right, guess we're, <laughs> I go in for like four different attacks with, <laughs> with, with flurry of blows and it's dead. <laughs> so, so, and then all of a sudden, so Shadowfell Dragon comes down. Okay, how's everyone going to react to that? Uh, we're going to be killing it now. <laughs> Because of course we are. But on the on the flip side with Hephaestus and Shump, it was only the two of us in the party. Yes. So it was very easy for us to be like, we're outmatched a lot. Yeah. And we did run away several times. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We had because a party of six. We, so. Yeah. We didn't have that support. If one of us would go down, mm-hmm. the other one was like, Shit got real. Yeah. Time to go. Right, right, right. Um, And in that instance, when I jumped on the demon's back that I was just talking about, I was alone. I was separated. Mm-hmm. I went at this fully knowing that I could die and there's no one to save me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but in other instances, there was a, we were, had the town guards all coming after us. Ton mm-hmm. of guards. Ton of guards. Because it was city, not a town. So it was, you know, city guards. And they, like, dozens, and we were outnumbered. 
and outmatched. And I think the that Shump had gone down. Mm-hmm. And so my reaction to this was, oh, fuck, grab the or- half-orc bard, sling him up onto my back, transform into a horse, and gallop the fuck away. Right. Um, right. <laughs> which I did, and then we had a little chase scene, and it was like, yeah, you clear the freaking wall, you, like, go up a gantry and jump over it and just bolt out into the woods. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I keep running for, like, an hour. <laughs> And that was probably a good positive reaction. Uh, yes. So it was like, what? What do you do? Your your partner just got downed in combat, and you are super outnumbered at level like two or three. Right. 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 It's like, yeah, I'm turning into a horse and running, but I'm taking him with me. Right. Absolutely. Um, and there was definitely uh, at least one other situation when he had done the same, not transforming into horse because he's a, a, a bard, but like where he'd pick me up and like had carried me off mm-hmm. and we just escape sure you know it's so it's it's live to fight another day not be a hero and die yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no my my party was much more a uh, fight to fight another day because <laughs> i can give you a couple examples of reactions that our party had um that Shadowfell dragon, for instance, like one, we had actually done a little bit of, I guess you could actually consider them held actions. We had set up traps because we knew that there was this, you know, patrol of orcs that was going to be coming to our location. So we had set, it, you have to think of it as like almost end We set up like the log traps and stuff that would fall down and topple over a bunch of them and stuff. So we did that and then it's night. And we're dealing with them, and there's, you know, more guys pouring through, and then the Shadowfell dragon comes down. So we're fighting, and we're doing okay, and the dragon says, okay, wait, I'd, I'd, we, we gotta talk. So the dragon comes down and starts talking, and we, we stop combat, so that, so that they can make, the Shadowfell dragon can make the case of why they're going around destroying towns. And um, so it starts in on the speech, about how, well, there's the law, and then there's the law of war, and war is more important than the law. And as, as it, it doesn't take long before our elf priestess uh, just kind of goes, okay, done talking, and just lobs a spell at him <laughs> immediately. It was, it, was either, it was either our elf priestess or our Yuan-Ti sorceress one of them, where they were just like, nope, not even dealing with this anymore, and just lobs a spell immediately at, we're not in combat anymore. But all of a sudden, it's just like, boom, right on there. And I'm thinking to myself, well, okay. And I shadow step back onto his back again. Oh yeah, by the way, I had shadow stepped onto the back of the Shadowfell Dragon. <laughs> Technically, it's a shadow, so I guess it works. It is. Well, it was it was nighttime anyway. So I, I could do that. But anyway, I, I, I was on his back and I'm kind of like, I'll be back to see you. And then before you know it, Rembrandt's like, well, we're back in combat. Shadow step up onto this <laughs> shadow bell dragon. Would you like a stunning strike now? OK. And, but that was literally just like all of a sudden in the middle of speech. Yep. Sorry. We're doing combat again. Not here in this to give you an idea of what happens when the whole party is not all together. We were trying to get back to uh, our town of Circlestone that has now been occupied by all of these orcs. Town is overrun with them. Uh, Me and most of the crew are uh, over in one building on one side of the town uh, talking to a contact that we have. And then over on the other side, you have essentially like a ritual circle that's being built. And uh, our priestess and our druid and her brother are over there trying to talk to them about what we might be able to do to resolve the situation. And we figured, okay, that's fine. But of course, you know, this is the crew. And so the two of them uh, decide they don't like what these guys are saying. And the, the elf priestess in this particular case says... I'm just going to, like, turn you to stone all of a sudden. And, um, yeah. So there were only two of them there at the time, and there was no way for any of us to even know that they were in combat at the time. Right. 
over on the side, and they decided to pick a fight with literally, like, five orc guards and a captain. <laughs> and, and, and As one does. As one does. A few of them very high-level uh, spell users, you know, um, just decided to, to do that um, with no backup, except, um, like, her brother, who uh, had dealt with an injury since the war. So... So they're they're trying to deal with that, and all of the sudden we're like, oh, as we're listening to this, it's like, oh, you know, you might have let us know beforehand. That would have been a good thing for us to be aware of. Uh, so what do we have to do? Well, first they have to communicate it to us, and I think they had a they had a signal stone, so one of them was able to actually you know uh, alert someone or actually i think what we ended up doing is we we did like listen checks you know uh perception checks to see if somebody could actually tell what was going on and once we did uh you know the actual bulk of our forces could start going over there but you have to find a way to go through an entire town that is patrolled by a flurry of orcs without being detected so that I can, so that we can get over to the other side and join them in combat so there's distance to take into account i had to use paths without trace pretty much for the whole party to try and see if we could stealth run our way through the field so we could get to the other side inside of like five or six turns while they're deciding to overmanned you know attack this group and so was that well thought out? I don't know. I don't think so. We won. I felt like those were the kind of things where, you know, the enemy basically goaded them into a reaction uh, from, from an actual storyline sense. But now, going back, going back to the long, long ago, where you were talking about the idea of doing a bunch of opposing roles when you're actually in combat... Um, that made me think about another thing that I wanted to discuss, which is the idea of action economy. Um, because action economy can be a, uh, a pretty big thing in trying to keep the flow of your combat moving along and not getting too dragged down. Uh, and that's one of the things I always worried about with reactions, that it's another step in the middle of, right. of what you're doing. So... Uh, let's see, what were these, do these questions make any sense? Let's see. Uh, should the actions taken by a player on their turn be used primarily on their turn? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, but, Unless it's like a delayed burst blast fireball. Okay, okay. Um, and then, uh, sub to that is, should bonus actions be allowed after the player's turn? I think that would be dependent on what the bonus action is. Mm. Uh, for instance, druid shapeshifting, bonus action. Got it. Okay. Um, should we allow a druid to shapeshift on someone else's turn? Uh, maybe if they declare it on their turn? As a, as a held action? Like, as a held action, like a held bonus action? But that begs the thing. So, let's say you're attacking the druid. And then suddenly, on your swing, they turn into a fly. A waste of wild shape, but that could have been a really big hit. Ooh, but what if they still hit you? Then, I mean, a fly would have astronomically high AC. This is, <laughs> this is true, it would have really high AC. Yeah, like, I turn into a sparrow. Because they're tiny, they get more AC bonus. Okay, what kind of sparrow? European. <laughs> Carrying coconuts. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that the sparrow is carrying a coconut. That's going to make it a lot harder. Uh, actually, it's going to make it a lot easier to hit if it has a coconut. But it has, it has offensive capabilities now. Um, yes. Yeah. No, it, it's okay. Is it an eastern swallow? I hope so. It's European. European. Okay, good. It's a sparrow. Yes. Anyways. So, like, should you let the druid <laughs> turn to a creature on their turn? Because it would affect that outcome. Uh, for better or for worse, but like it, it you're almost asking the question: Could wild shape be something that would actually be utilized as a reaction? Because it seems like at that point you're saying that almost any kind of reaction 
uh, could also be from your list of normally held actions or or, or normal actions, right. bonus actions would be. Your and reaction. I would say it's actually tougher. Um, mm. I would say generally I wouldn't let like something like Wild Shave be used as a reaction, but in circumstances where if you're being attacked and it's something unusual, unpredictable, and like frightening, sure, I would think it'd be okay to like. As a reaction to something startling, sure. wild sheep. Yeah, yeah. But I would say that the form you take wouldn't be something you would get to choose in that case. And I think it would have to be um, a random roll or, like, one of your most common forms that you use. So let's say suddenly, like, mm-hmm. you're on a boat. I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat. You're rowing the boat and your druid's there and they're rowing the boat or you're doing whatever and suddenly a leviathan comes up out of the water and goes to eat you. I uh, yeah. That's unpredictable, shocking, scary, and massive. That's true. <laughs> if your druid's character uh, and your player wanted to have a reactionary wild shape to that. Okay. As just like a fear reaction. Mm-hmm. And I think it could be really cool with druids specifically if you had fear reactions that responded with a wild shape. Would you have to declare that, though? Like, what wild shape do you shape into when you have a fear reaction? I think it'd be cool to set that up as the character uh, in the player yeah. sheet kind of deal, as a character. Like, yeah, if I get startled, like, it may not use a wild shape, like, charge, for instance, if it's just roleplay. Yeah. Based, not combat productive. Right. And it's not, like, helpful. But, like, yeah, uh, every time I sneeze, I turn to a mouse. Yeah, that's very much wild shape. <laughs> it's it's super wild. But th- that is that does yeah. make me start thinking about how interesting it would be if you actually set up certain reactions that your characters would take. But they that would be standardized reactions to different situations that they would get into based on their personality. Right. Or, or imagine a wizard or a sorcerer with can- a cantrip, like fairy fire. Yeah. I don't remember if that's a, a, a cantrip. But, you know, something dazzling lights or um, dazzle or a uh, minor image or something like that. Imagine if their fear response is like, if you come up and scare them, you spook them from behind. Yeah. And they go, ah, and they go like, just like pixie dust mm-hmm. sparkles all from their hands as they're scared yeah, shitless. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's that. Or the possibility that you could set something up with possibly like your barbarian. Um, that, like, under certain circumstances, if somebody says something about your mama, all of a sudden you just instantly enter berserk or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, sorry, this is just the character. If you said something, <laughs> you... Yeah, just ver- ticks like that could be fun. Like, uh, like what's something your character hates? Yeah. It's like, oh, my character hates if his, uh, if his, cl- if his clan is brought up for Burberry. Oh, yeah. It's like, he's been ostracized from his clan, um... So if anyone mentions the 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 Longbleed clan, he just flies into a, a unconsolable rage. <laughs> He's gone into Hulk mode, and uh, you you got to work really hard to tell him that the sun's getting real low there, pal. <laughs> so try and bring it back. But I, I definitely think characters that have baked in reactions to certain ticks could be fun. Mm. And I don't think I see it very often. No, no, um, I sure don't like that. That's definitely another kind of reaction you can take. Yeah. I think it would be fun if you were, like, a monk. And, uh, like, it, that deflect missile is, is you know, uh, one of the common reactions that they have. But just the idea that anytime anyone throws literally anything at them, they do a deflect missile. Here's here's a beer and slides the beer across the table and you try to do the deflect <laughs> action and chuck it back at the guy. <laughs> that would actually be really comical. That would be or hilarious. in some situations it would be detrimental. Yeah, no, it would definitely be detrimental. I just love the idea that like, you know, think fast. Anytime you try throwing something at the mug, it like needs to punch the thing back at you immediately. <laughs> because it's, it's like, oops, sorry, force of habit. Yeah, sorry, this is just how I'm <laughs> I was always PTSD doing... response. <laughs> it's like, yeah, sorry, no, I had a uh, I had a beer mug thrown at me when I was young, and this, now this is just. But I just like this idea that like anytime anyone throws anything to me, throw here, here, take the sword. Oh, get chuck the sword back. <laughs> Whoever threw it to me, just chuck it back. There is a <laughs> toss me the sword. Here you go. Ah. 
Yeah, it's like it'd be funnier too if the monk did it. <laughs> Even when anything like came within his is uh, their vicinity of their five foot area. Yeah. So like, say you're trying to toss the sword to the fighter. Yeah. And it goes through the monk's area, and the monk just catches it, and throws it. Back. <laughs> yeah, and just strikes it back at them. Yeah. How detrimental that would be. Oh, it would be. It would be terribly uh, detrimental. I think. <laughs> if you've never seen it, uh, go on YouTube and look up the gamers. It's a probably about 90 minute movie. It's a little older. It's not the best quality like filming Mm because it was kind of, I think, college students on a low budget. Yeah. Um, But it's very much tropey and campy as all hell. And there's several tropes in there that are fantastic. But the one that I just thought of because of this conversation is uh, the party gets to a river they need to cross. And so... This is done with people in costumes, and then it cuts away to people at the table playing the characters, mm. um, being the same people playing their characters. But anyways, so the party, you see, the, you know, it's got the DM narrating. The party comes across a large, deep river, and it's like, you need to find a way across. And it, it kind of pauses, and you see the, the party sitting out there at a river bank, kind of looking around, picking up rocks, kind of doing whatever, kind of seeing how deep the water is, whatever. Mm. And so the DM goes... Uh, to whatever the sorcerer's name is, he goes, hey, aren't you forgetting something? And he's like, like what? He's like, your character's debilitating fear of water? And he goes, oh, yeah. And then he just starts screaming. <laughs> yeah. He- <laughs> like, it's a delayed reaction, because, like, you forget what your character's reactions to things should be. So that's what reminded me, where this character's kind of, like, sitting there, and just all... Oh, yeah, I'm scared of water. <laughs> um, the, the long and the short of this is they try to knock the character out and accidentally end up killing him. Perfect. Barbarian uppercut him. Killed him. The trope right after that is when they meet the new character who looks like the other guy, just a different color scheme. Oh, yeah. And he just joins the party with no qualms. It's like, we lo- we could use a wizard like you. It's like, sure, I'll go along with you, and then to just go, because inserting new characters is hard. Um, yeah, there's a lot of fun things that you could probably do with different character classes in order to make that uh, reactions not just something that you can take, but actually something that is forced to take uh, based on your character. Um, I don't know if that would work so well for just your regular actions or bonus actions, but for reactions, there is a possibility for it because I do see a lot of people just reacting not out of strategy, which is usually how it's used, but out of habit. And there's a, there's a possibility for that. True, not exactly what we were uh, going to discuss, but definitely something <laughs> worth thinking about for the future. In general, just to summarize at the end of the episode. Do you think that reactions, as a general mechanism, have been underutilized, or are they even necessary? I think they're probably underutilized in ways aside from combat. Um, I don't think they're necessary, but I think they can add fun and flair to situations that would otherwise just be kind of -of run-of-the-mill. I kind of fall on, on the end of reactions are not utilized to the best of their ability, even in the way that they currently are supposed to be used. Um, (laughs) Because realistically, and maybe this is just because it doesn't get really very well explained to me, but um, I don't think I ever actually use Deflect Missile. Right. There are probably a good handful handful of times that I could have actually done it, but I didn't think to use it, and I don't think that it's usually emphasized for players, especially when they're starting out in, in a game system. I think that if you were just starting D&D, for instance, like, I'm a D&D noob, um, chances are no one is even going to bother telling you how reactions work or that they exist. It's not really a focus point, <laughs> um, and, and you might not even know to use them in the field. I do worry about reactions being spammed. Like, like for instance, trying to put yourself into situations where you can continually use reactions because right. that does affect 
action economy and slows things down a lot. And if you get into a situation where you have reactions upon reactions, if you get into reactionception, then you're <laughs> reception re- reacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Inception reaction. Um, you have a problem there too because you can get into almost an infinite uh, action loop where <laughs> where I deflect a missile and then the other guy goes, "Oh, okay, I use deflect missile back at you," and <laughs> and so on and so forth, which is probably the reason why they don't let you take ultimate, you know, endless reaction. <laughs> Can you imagine a situation where you just had two monks that were just constantly deflecting a missile back at each other? Uh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> just They're stuck in a permanent loop. Your party uh, encounters two monks that are continuously trying to throw an arrow back and forth between each other. <laughs> Enjoy. How do you solve this problem? Actually, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to put a board between them and the arrow's going to... Fly in just there. knock, just knock one of the monks out with stunning strike, and just let him get hit with the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, couldn't you just have stunning strike? Just be. Here's here's what you do instead. This is a much faster way. Is that you have the monks simultaneously try to hit each other with stunning strike, and one of them is probably going to be more effective at it than the other. Perfect. Um. Okay. So I think that that is probably as much about reactions as we needed to talk about, not only from a mechanical standpoint, but also from a storytelling standpoint. So that's good. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Mix it up a little. We're mixing things up. If a boulder happens to be, uh, you know, coming towards you, you might want to use your reaction for a reflex save to see if you can get out of the way of that thing. Uh, Indiana Jones learned that real fast. Yeah, you got to be really careful about those pebble knockdowns. Especially if it's complete, or we could say total. Anyway, if um, if folks out there would like to share reactions with us in a forum online, Alex, where could they go? We would love if you shared some reaction stories or reactions to our episode over with us at Delvcast.com. Yes, you can find all of our articles and our podcasts over there. There's a lot of really interesting things for you to check out. Uh, And while you are there looking at all of that cool stuff, you can go and click on our Patreon banner if you want to get more uh, unedited raw episodes with additional content in them, uh, as well as get episodes early. Feel free to follow us on all of the social media networks, such as uh, Twitter. We're we're there. We exist on Twitter. We're on Twitter. We We exist. Yeah, we're on Twitter. I am at Citadium. I'm at EXP Limited, and our show is at Delve Podcast. And I would like to send a special shout-out to our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Nick, and, and Drunk Paul who has helped us out as our Discord Shining Level patron. Thank you so much to all of them. And uh, I suppose the one question I would pose at the end of the episode is if you out there could come up with a like a, a written rule uh, reaction move that you could take, if you could come up with a reaction that your your character could have, what would it be? What classes would it apply to? I would come up with the reaction of sharing this podcast episode with people who might like it. That would be a great reaction. You could just do that immediately. If it was a me thing, it would be, oh, there's a new episode. I am going to make sure to subscribe to the podcast feed. I mean, I assume anyone who's already listened to the episode subscribed, so. Uh, Okay, in that case, (laughs) um, I would say... Uh, like and subscribe somewhere. If you're if you're subscribed on like one of the podcast feeds, why not just subscribe to all the other ones? We're we're everywhere now. You could find us on uh, the what's it called that iTunes thing and the Google and the the Spotify. We're on all of those things. So feel free to check us out there. This is the longest outro ever. <laughs> And our reaction to that is to quickly and abruptly end the podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. I think that's how this works now. We just do the episode and something happens. Yeah, we just...
We just do. We just do the do. All right. That's that's trademarked. Yeah, that is also trademarked. You can't do that. You you can't do the do. You can you can don't do the do. I'm pretty sure. Uh, you can donut the do. Don't do what do do does. That's that sounds a, shitty. It certainly does. Uh, <laughs> okay, so something that isn't shitty is going to be the episode.